So even though I've named this a quick Python overview in our textbook, there's actually a lot to go through. Uh, we're just trying to transition from Reborg and Scratch into a more traditional programming language, in this case, Python. Uh, you can run Python directly in your browser uh, on these pages, or you can download Thonny, uh, which is the IDE we're going to use throughout the course. So to do that, just open up the Thonny download link right there. It's going to take you to a page that looks like this, and you can download either for Windows, Mac, or Linux, and it should work the same way for each of them. Uh, once you download it and install it, which should work, by the way, in your school as well, just double check with your teacher before you do it. You don't need any administrative rights. When you open it, it should give you a window that looks something like that. Now, uh, it's important to realize what you're looking at. That top portion is called the text editor. It's the same thing as working in Notepad or something like that. You're just creating a file and saving it. Uh, and every time you click on the Run button right there, it's going to run whatever's inside this text editor. The bottom part is the shell, uh, and that's where you can run one line of Python at a time. So for example, if I go into the shell and I just type in 2 plus 3 and hit enter, it'll run and show me that it's 5. Uh, whereas in the text editor, I'd have to actually save that file and then run it. Now, uh, just a, a clarification, anytime that you want to write a longer form program, you want to do that up here in the text editor because you're going to save that. Anything that you do down here, that's just, you can think of that as like your workspace, some place that you're going to uh, do a little bit of testing uh, or where the output of your program will show up, but anything you want to save should be happening up here in the text editor. Now, uh, to begin with, Python cares a lot about white space. That's how we know uh, when a block begins and ends. And so if you look at this code right here, uh, if you run that, you're going to see that it comes up with an error. And it says, syntax error, bad input on line 3. The reason for that, if you look at this little bit of code, is that on line 2, even if there's some things here you don't understand yet, on line 2, we have an if statement. Uh, and we know from Reborg that Anytime I have an if statement, I need to indent the thing that follows. So if we run this, now it will work correctly and we'll say, oh, okay, yeah, the number is bigger. So what we've done here, just to clarify, is we've set a variable called some number and we've set it equal to five. Then we said, if that some number is greater than three, then we'll print this. And we did since five is greater than three. Now, one of the things you notice here is that we just used a function called print. Uh, and the way that print works, is you just use the the function print and then you can put any number of arguments inside the uh, the brackets there so for example if you called print Monday Tuesday Wednesday like that and I'm just gonna copy that and paste it into Thonny if I were to print that I would get Monday Tuesday Wednesday anything that you put in with a comma will be separated by a space when you print that by default now, there's lots of different ways you can produce output in Python. Uh, so we could draw some pictures, we could turn on LEDs on some hardware, do lots of different things. For now, just to keep it simple, all we're going to do is use a print statement to output values just now. Now, a couple other things that we need to understand is the idea of a variable and a data type. So we just created a variable a moment ago, and it was this one right here, some number. So Anytime that you create a variable, you're going to want to use lowercase letters to create the name of that. And anytime that you want to make a longer name of a variable, you're going to separate the words with an underscore, like we did there. Now, uh, each of those variables could be a different data type. And by data type, all that I mean is that there are four fundamental data types we care about in Python. Integer, which is just any number that doesn't have a decimal, whether it's positive or negative. A floating point number, or float for short, and that's any number that does have a decimal, so like 1.2 or negative 4.75. A string, which is always, always going to be encapsulated in quotes. So there's going to be a quote at the front and the end of the string. And it doesn't matter whether it's a single or a double quote, it still works the same way. Uh, and finally, a Boolean, which is going to be true or false. Notice it's going to be a capital T and capital F, and also that there are no quotes around it. If there's quotes around that, then it would be a string. Without quotes, true or false mean uh, either true or false as a Boolean. So uh, as you look at these ones, since this uh, data right here has quotes around it, then that must be a string. 
this one here, since it is a number that doesn't have any decimal, that means it's going to be an integer. And since this is true without quotes around it, that means it's a Boolean. And finally, since this is a 1.5 that has a decimal in the number, that means we're looking at a float. And so knowing those four uh, primitive data types is really, really important in understanding how to make Python do what you want it to do. Anytime that you aren't sure what the data type of something is, you can use a function called type to find out. So for example, right here where we print out the value of type 5, if you think back to what a primitive data type is, uh, this 5 right there, that's an integer. So that means when I print this, this type will tell us what is the data type of 5. So I print it out and I'm going to get something that says, oh, that's an int is what's happening here. So if we were to change that and make it 5.3, we'd get a float. If I were to put quotes around the thing like that, we would get a string. And just to clarify one last thing, if I put in false without quotes around it, I would get a bool for boolean. Now, if you want to convert between data types, you can do that using uh, these functions right here, string, int, and float. You can also use bool, but we're not going to use that one just yet. Uh, and so if you were to run this code that you're looking at right here, we start with a being an integer. So we print its type. So that's going to give us an int because we've set it to be an integer value. Right here, we've set b to be the string version of a. In other words, now we took the 4, we turned it into a string. So it's actually going to look like this. It's going to be a 4 with quotes around it. And when we print its type, we get string. Uh, then down here, we say, well, let's set c to equal the floating point version of b. So the floating point version of a 4 is just 4.0. So we get a float when we print the type. Of C. So we can use these and we will have to use these anytime that we want to convert from one data type into another. Now Python is really good at math as are most programming languages. Uh, so here is a quick summary of all the different mathematical operators that you might want to use. Uh, I shouldn't say all, most of the mathematical operators you might want to use. So for addition you can just say 1 plus 2 and you'll get 3. Subtraction is what you think it is. Multiplication in Python is represented with an asterisk like that. Division is this slash. Truncating division, which is going to give me the quotient, uh, is two slashes. And so what that means uh, is that here, if you think back to like doing long division back when you were in grade school, uh, what that's going to give you is the number on top of your long division. So in other words, two goes into five two times. And then this percent sign is called modulo. And what that does is gives you the remainder. So think back to like long division, five divided by two would be two with the remainder of one. So the two backslashes here give you a two for the quotient. The modulo gives you the remainder and that's how we get a one there. And finally, to find the power of something, we can use two uh, asterisks. So five double asterisks two is gonna give us five to the power of two, which is 25. And we'll use those a bunch as well. Now, this part here that we're going to go into is really just uh, making sure that we understand the control structures. Uh, they're going to work exactly the way they did in Reborg. So when we have an if statement, if you think about it, uh, if I had a number set to be 42 right here, and then I ask if the number equal equals 42, and there's a really important distinction to be made here. When I use a single equal sign like that, I am assigning the value of 42 into the variable number. Here, when I use two equal signs, I'm checking, I'm comparing to see does number, the variable, is it set currently to 42, is what I'm asking there. So when I run this, what's going to happen is we are going to get so long, so long and thanks for all the fish if the number is set to 42. If I were to set this to something else, like 10, for example, and I run that again, I'm going to get a blank result because here the number is neither 42 nor 23. If I set it to 23, I would get Michael Jordan is the goat. So again, the important thing to take away from this is that we assign a value using a single equal sign. We check a value or compare a value using two equal signs. Now, 
Uh, in the same way that an if elif else uh, block worked in Reborg, works the same way here. Remember that when you have an if elif else, only one of the branches can possibly execute. So if you were to run this, the temp value being negative three, I would first check to see if temp is less than negative 10, it's not. So then else if the temp is less than 15, oh, it is, okay, then I'm gonna print wear a long sleeve shirt and I'm gonna ignore the else because one of these did occur. So when I run, I'm gonna get wear long sleeve shirt. Now, if I were to change this to, uh, let's say negative 30, well now temperature is less than negative 10. So I'm gonna print wear a winter jacket since it's an if elif else, I'm gonna ignore these other two because only one branch can execute and I'll just get wear winter jacket. And finally, if we change that to plus 30, well now it's neither less than 10 nor less than 15. So when I run it, I'll get wear a t-shirt. Okay, now a loop structure. So just like we had a while loop in Reborg, and remember when we used a while loop in Reborg, that was generally speaking when we didn't know for sure uh, where a wall or a, uh, an object we wanted to pick, pick up was. So it was when we wanted to repeat something, but we didn't know exactly how many times it should repeat in advance. So uh, in Python, we can use a while loop in much the same way. For this one, I've set it up so that we actually do know the number of times, uh, but a while loop will work for the uh, unknown number of times as well. We'll learn that in a bit, but for now, here's how the structure works. Let's say that the counter was set to 10, and I say, well, counter is greater than zero. I wanna print the counter, and then I wanna set counter to be whatever counter used to be, take away one. So that means that it starts at 10. The next time I reset it, so that now it is whatever it used to be, 10 minus one or nine. So I'm just reassigning it a new value each time through. I'll print out all those values. Once I finally get out of my while loop, I'm gonna print blast off. So when I run this, I'm gonna get 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and finally blast off. And of course we could change these values to whatever we want. So if we change it to a five, We'll just get five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Now, just to double check and make sure you're understanding what's happening, let's say I did that. Now what I'd get uh, is this blast off is inside my while loop. So it would happen every time. I get five, blast off, four, etc., all the way down. So do be very careful with how you're doing the indentation here because it means something very different if it's outside the while loop or inside the while loop. Now in Reborg, uh, we had a repeat block, uh, a repeat command that we could use. So we said something like repeat 10, and then we could print out whatever or make Reborg move. Uh, in Python, there isn't actually a repeat command. That is just added to, to Reborg to keep things as simple as we could. Now, in Python, what we do if we want something to repeat a specific number of times is we use this statement right here. Now, there's a fair bit happening. I'm not going to explain it in its full detail right now. But just so you understand the basic idea, we'll say four, and then we come up with an arbitrary name, an arbitrary uh, variable. In this case, I used counter. Uh, so for counter in range, and then here we just say, how, how many times do I want the thing to repeat? So this is like the exact same as me saying repeat 10 in Reborg, and then I'll print the counter. And so what the counter is gonna do is gonna start at zero, so it begins at zero and it goes up to, but not including whatever value I put in here. So zero through nine, and notice that that has 10 elements in it. So it would repeat this 10 times. The for loop, you can have a little more control over it if you add in more arguments. So for example, if we did this for counter in range five comma 11, that means start counting at five and go up to, but not including 11. So when I print the counter and I run that, I'm gonna get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it just, again, starts at the five, goes up to, but not including that last number, which is at 11, so it stops after 10. Uh, and one other thing that we can do with a for loop that we'll explore in much more detail later in the course, so you really don't have to understand this yet, but I'm gonna include it for completeness, uh, is that we can do something like this. We can create a list uh, so I've defined grocery list to equal, and the way that you uh, tell Python you want a list is you use these square brackets like that. And then you put a bunch of different elements inside it separated with commas. So I've got apples, carrots, milk, and yogurt as separate elements of this list. 
And we can simply say something like for, and again, I just made up a random variable here. In this case, I called it item. For item in grocery list, I'm just going to print, don't forget to buy the item. Uh, and the first time through the loop, the item will equal bananas. Then the second time, it'll be carrots, then milk, then yogurt. So when we run it, I'll get, don't forget to buy the apples, don't forget to buy the carrots, don't forget to buy the milk, and don't forget to buy the yogurt. Again, lots happening there. You don't have to feel like you need to understand every part of that yet. We'll get into lists in quite a while uh, down the course here. Now, in terms of functions, they behave in the same way that we're used to in Reborg. So there's a little more going on with them than we explored in Reborg, but uh, the basics would be the same. So for example, if we call def say hello, and inside we just print hello there, and we call it in the exact same way that we would have done in Reborg, when we run that, it'll do exactly what you think. It'll print hello there. And we, of course, could call that more than once. So if we said say hello multiple times, we would just call the function more than once. So that works the same way that we're used to in Reborg. Now, as it turns out, a function can also take in an argument. So for example, if I put something inside the brackets, so when I say def say hello and I, I use a variable name inside there, that means that I can use the variable name that I have defined right here anywhere inside my function. So I've done that right here. Uh, so now I could say, say hello and pass in the string Eli. And if I do that, it'll say hello there and it'll uh, put in Eli. So it'll look like that. And of course, the reason that's helpful is now I could use this with different names, right? So I could say, say hello to Zoe and say hello to Bree, and if I do that, I'm going to now get hello there Eli, hello there Zoe, hello there Bree, and it works just fine with that exact same function. Now, if you want to take an input from the user rather than just having everything already pre-written uh, in your code, but you want the user to interact with it, uh, one easy way to do that is to use the input function. Now, a heads up to you every time you get input from the user using the input function, it will always, always, always return a string to you. So if you want to do any math with it uh, and expect a number to come out of it, you'll need to convert that into a number yourself. Uh, but for example, here, let's say we had your name, a variable, that equaled some input. And in input, we just ask, what do we want to say to the user? So if we run this, we'll get, what is your name? And we can type in whatever, Dan and it will print out whatever value I just typed in. Okay, now we could use that in combination with the function that we just saw. So for example, if I had def say hello and I had some name that comes it being passed into the function and I'm going to use that just like this function was defined before, I could now take in your name as input and now I'm going to call the function say hello and I'm going to pass whatever you type in. So if I run this and we type in Bob, I'm going to get hello there, Bob. Or if I run it again and type in Jane, I'm going to get hello there, Jane. So we take an input from the user and then we can print out some value. Now, this next one I've made an intentional error on. So what's going to happen is if we were to run this code and I, I run this, I'm going to take in the age as an input. So when I hit run, it's going to ask how old am I? If I type in 16, you would probably expect it to run and say, oh, well, if age equal equals 16, well, then you can get your driver's license. But in fact, when I run it, it's going to do nothing. And in fact, even if I type in 15, it'll do nothing. Or gibberish, it'll still do nothing. So there's something goofy going on here. And it all comes down to what is the data type when you take input from the user. So the data type, when you take input from the user, remember, is always, always, always going to be a string. So in this code, I asked if age equal equals 16. Well, it doesn't, because 16 right there has a data type that is an integer. And we know that since we took input from the user, that this age variable must be a string. So one way you could fix this is you could put quotes around the 16 like that and quotes around the 15 because now we're checking does the age variable which we know is a string does it equal the string 16 not the integer 16 but the string 16 so when I run it if I put in 16 now 
this if statement will evaluate to true and we do get you can get your driver's license or for 15 you can get your learners so uh, please be very careful when you're taking an input from the user remember that it will always always give you a string as a result now one last thing to talk about is the fact that Python comes with a whole variety of modules so when we were exploring in Reborg we were able to type in things like from library import star uh, and what that meant is look in the library file and import every function that's available inside of there uh, now we can do that inside Python too so for example if we wanted a whole bunch of different math functions there is a built-in library called math that gives us, gives us access to a bunch of math functions so if we wanted to print the square root of 16 or the cosine of 0 we could do that as long as we've imported math first if I get rid of that and I try running it again I'm gonna get an error that says oh hey the square root is not actually defined so it doesn't know what this means the only reason it does know is that I put in from math import star or import everything right off the bat in which case it knows what to do now although that works and we can run it that way a generally uh, better way for us to do it is to instead type in import math instead of from math import everything uh, and the reason that we'd usually prefer that is that if by chance you defined your own function that was called the same thing as something inside of a module that you've imported then it's not going to know necessarily which one to do or at least you won't know which one it's choosing necessarily so you get some weird behavior so although it means typing a slightly longer command generally speaking calling import math and then math dot square root which just means look inside the math file and use the function called square root that's going to be a generally better way for us to do it so this is how we'll use import for most of the course and there's one other handy one that we want to know about and that is that there's a random uh, module as well there's lots of different modules that we'll explore but random is another handy one for us to look at so any, if I called import random and then now I print random dot rand int well rand int is just a function inside the random file the random module and it wants to say well okay give me a random number from 1 up to 10 so each time I run this I'm gonna get a new number that's just between 1 and 10 so another really handy thing to do Now, if you want you can try using all of these different uh, things that we've explored today uh, and see if you can make uh, something in Python for yourself I realize we ran through a ton of stuff so you might be feeling a little confused and that's okay you don't have to feel like you understood every little thing today uh, we're gonna go into all those ideas in much more detail one thing you could try in order to uh, to kind of test yourself see whether or not you understand what's going on is you could try building a number guessing game like what we built in scratch fair warning if you do attempt this there's a very good chance you won't be able to do it yet but give it a couple of weeks and if you come back to this and try it then you'll likely know how to do it